Hello everybody, Bubble Test here and welcome back to Hearts Iron 4. In today's video we're going to be doing the ultimate ideology exploit. Now I've talked about this many times, so it's time to show what it can do. And to do that, we're going to be returning democracy to the party as a democratic Soviet Union. So, let's get started. First things first, research slot. It's standard electronics, industry and so on. For our civs, it's just going to be civ spam. I know, not mill spam, I'm surprised too. Anyway, for our mills, it's just going to be weapons and convoy spam. For the army, let's gather it up. There we go. We're going to change the tank divisions over to infantry to keep all the tanks safe. And let's create an intelligence agency. Always useful. And that is pretty much all of our prep out the way. So all that's left to do now is our focus. The path of Marxism and Leninism. And go up to speed 5. And begin. And now we have to choose whether or not we're going to be going with the center, the left opposition, or the right opposition. And today, it's going to be the right opposition. It's my favorite of the Soviet paths, so I like to play it. Our next two focuses are going to be gain support from party members and cooperation against Stalin. Next up though, we're going to have to start expanding our states. Our base today is also going to be in Archangelisk. We're going to be going for states such as Onoletz and Volgadir and up to Murmansk. And that's it. We're going to have five states and that will be enough. I know I've said in the past you can do this with three states, and that's true, you still can. But, eh, five states, three states, it's a mild difference anyway. Oh, this is an unfortunate event to have, but we are running power and are quite high, so have no choice. And here's the Spanish Civil War. We're going to send Vasily Chukov and six mountaineers there. We're not intended to save Republican Spain, we're only going there to grind some XP, but if you want to help them, be my guest. You could definitely get a lot of air XP by doing this. Okay, that's not the bad version of that event. And now we're going to sway the railway workers, we need their support. Hmm, our paranoia is definitely running just a bit too high. Yeah, I'm going to play safe and do some satisfactory production reports. I've been saving it for just something like this. Now today, I intend to save pretty much everyone I can. The Zenoniites, Routin, and unfortunately the first trial, the trial of the Zenoniites, is on its way. So we have to do divert attention towards the military or they will be purged. Don't worry, this focus will finish one day before the trial fires, which is good enough. Oh dear, we now have this event. Clement is now accusing Rokasin Rokasovsky. Now this is interesting actually, we have three options, and the third one is probably the most interesting. So we can either get rid of Rokosovsky, get rid of Clement, or end the investigation without a verdict. Now as you can see here, if we do this option, it, we lose 60 political power, but both Rokosovsky and Clement get cowed by Stalin. This is something not too many people have noticed with this event. So if you get this event, and you can afford it with the paranoia, I would genuinely recommend doing the third option if you want to get both of these generals to defect to you. Now as I'm not too particularly bothered today, I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to play safe and do the second option. But there's a little tip for you, especially if someone like Chukachevsky gets accused. Anyway, let's now align the Zenoniites. Again, we're going to be trying to save absolutely everyone, so even someone like Carl Reddit gets to stay alive. And there go the Air Force Generals. It's probably the best one we could have gotten in this situation. And now let's liberate Routin. I don't know why you'd ever actually do that, he's not the best advisor, but again, we're going to be saving everyone, so everyone has to come along. Although I will make a specific exception for the NKVD. Well yes, we could eventually align some of them with infiltrating the NKVD. That would be a lot of extra time. And so, sorry Yagoda, you have to you go. And there we go. And now at this point we have no need to keep Stalin's paranoia down, so we're just going to let it tick over 90. Funny. Very funny. There's now a great purge in the administration. But funny enough, this would get rid of most of the right opposition. But there's what I wanted to see. Joseph Stalin mobilizes the armed forces. War it is. Right, as usual, we need to ensure our victory in this civil war by any means. So let's create empty, infantry battalions, artillery, save. Let's disband these mountaineers. 
Grab all units apart from the NKBD units, the barrier boys, and change them over to that. There we go. This is what we got now. A load of artillery divisions and a lot of equipment. And as usual, we're going to be sending all, all of that equipment to a Spain. And you know what, it'll be Nash of Spain today. And it's time for my favourite thing as usual. Time for the big numbers to ensure all the lend lease. And there we go. And now we are going to unfortunately lose 120 political power. We're going to go into the negative, that's quite annoying. But more importantly, we now have to choose our leader. I think we've done absolutely everyone except Kamernev. So you know what? It's his time. Let's do this. And here he is, the faded star himself. But anyway, let's win this. Division designer, create empty, new, mobile battalions, cavalry, saved. This unit is small, but considering the artillery divisions, they'll be fine. Speaking of the artillery, let's change them all over to that cavalry. There we go. Now let's break them up into five armies and prepare to go. Nice. So what generals do we have? The standard lot. And yep, Vasily Chukov, there you go. Logistics experts and offensive doctrine for now. Five extra divisions, good. Let's assign them. Let's get back that lend lease. Thank you very much. But now, let's go. Stalin should not be able to stop us for very long. His units are rubbish and he only has 18 okay divisions and that won't be enough to save him. The focus now... Hmm, let's strengthen the mode plan and do cohesion first. Oh yeah, this is what Routin does. He causes this little state here to rise up with us, which is weird. That would only be useful if your base is in Cheetah, but this state is one of the first ones you'd gain anyway. So why? Just, just why? Anyway, I'm going to start training up a load of these cavalry divisions and deploy them as soon as possible. 91 for now. That might be enough, actually. The main problem we're facing right now is just actually the fact that we're in winter. The ground is frozen. Kind of annoying, actually, but nothing we can do about it. If we waited too long, it would have resulted in yet another great purge. I mean, we're already cutting it tight with that one. And the second trial was on its way. Wow, we made it to Moscow quick. And here's our barrier boys, always being annoying as they usually are. As usual though, they're defeatable very easily by just encircling them. And eventually some of them will even try to defect to us. Anyway, here's our cavalry. Perfect, 119. God damn, I hate pins. Luckily the ground is pretty much forward, although it is a bit muddy. Oh well, nothing a few horses can't deal with. Horse runs fast, so we hire them. You could use motorized, but fuel is kind of a problem right now. Those first few weeks weren't the best, but we've pretty much broken out now. And now it's just victory point sniping. Nice. The focus now, we're going to be going all the way over here to address internal affairs. To be fair, our internal affairs aren't very good right now, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they're a bit of a mess. They are still civil, though. Oh, and we got ourselves a defector event. Oh yeah, there were like two generals cowed by Stalin. The first one is Boris. It's kind of annoying, actually. I believe the other one was Marky and Popov. I'm hoping he shows up, too. Oh, and that's it. The Soviet Union has capitulated. We have won. Nice. Very quick, very fast. We got a load of advisors, and we still did that faster than the coup. There's still no reason why you should ever do that. Anyway, while the Barrier Boys might have been annoying, NKVD Primacy will be very useful for us. So, there we go. The main problem with Lev Kamernev is actually just how little political power he gives. Look at that. Admittedly, we have many other debuffs that's caused this, but still. 0.12 political power a day. Only someone like Kaiserreich could do better. You know what? I really, really want to get military advisors for Spain done. And it should only be 70 days. Do you think Spain can hold on that long? 
Let's just see. Ah, uh, yes, the common turn does give us some communist support, but that's not really a problem. Well, that's unfortunate. This focus is very good. It gives us extra XP and a free general, but clearly we were too slow. Oh, well. Alright, at this point we aren't really going to be doing focuses. The main problem, again, is just how little political power we're getting, so... It's better, unfortunately, for us to just not do a focus at this moment. And there, 100 political power, let's ban fascism. And now let's reverse the collectivization process. Gives us some more democratic support. Small, but 10% for free. Yeah, I'd take it. We'd also have a lot more political power if I did return democracy to the party now. But again, I promised I'd do that when we were democratic. If you were doing this, I'd just recommend doing it now. And there we go. That's the only free bit of democratic support we're going to get. And now we're going to have to do it the hard way. Or, as I call it, the ultimate ideology exploit. Yet again, we have to start saving political power to do this. Right, let's get started. Let's justify on Japan. 20 days, thanks to them being at war with a major, plus NKVD. Good. And immediately, let's also justify on China. We have 10 political power, so let's do policy of collective security. Only for the extra political power. There you go, our justification on Japan is ready. Good. But we aren't going to use it. Do not use your justifications. And so is our justification on China. We have more political power, so let's do it again. On both of them. But now we just need to hold focus for quite a while, actually. And yet again, justify. These justifications are getting really quick now. And again for China. Oh, can you hear that? Sounds like another justification. Although unfortunately, because China's focus tree gives them a non-aggression pact with us that we can't refuse, we now can't justify on them. But that's okay. We already got quite a few justifications out of China. That's fine. It's annoying, but what can you do? Anyway, here's where the magic happens. Lev Kamenev has been criticised for his weak foreign policy because our first justification has expired. Now you might not have noticed this, but this event gives us a few effects. One, it takes away 30 political power, 5 war support, but most importantly for us, change of popularity of communism minus 5%. We're at 16% democratic support, and once we do it, 21%. This is how we're going to flip. We're going to use this event to get us all the democratic support we need. Now we need 60% to flip, so we need 9 justifications. That's going to be a lot of political power loss and war support loss, but that's what we have to do today. This is also why I banned fascism. If fascism had even a sliver of support, some of it would go into it, instead of going all into democracy. Although, if you want to go fascist, the reverse is true. Ban democracy and put it all into fascism. We need, if I'm correct, two extra war goals. That's achievable. And this is why we're holding focus. Eventually, our political power might drop into the negatives, and if that happens, our justifications will cancel. Once we've got all our justifications out of the way, we can continue our focuses again. You know, a more accurate name for this exploit would probably be the foreign policy flip, but considering I discovered it as far as I know, I'm going to call it the ultimate ideology exploit. There you go, for the first time we're into negative political power, and this justification is being held. And here we go, the final justification has expired. We are now over 60% democratic support, and if we scroll down in decisions, there it is. Democracy is on the rise. Now, we can't activate the referendum ourselves because we have, well, minus 144 political power. But luckily, the referendum should be forced upon us sometime soon. So that's what I'm going to wait on. Oh, what do you know? There it is. Immediately. We need a referendum. And the man, the myth, the legend, Alexander Kerensky is back. This time, he's not in a white Russia. He is in the Soviet Union as its leader. Oh, and here we get early mode and limited conscription for free. And you know what? Let's not do admin reforms. It's time. It's time for a democracy to return to the party. 
but not the Communist Party, the Democratic Party. And yes, some more interesting news, this is the only way we can get Alexander Kerensky as an advisor. He is no longer in exile, unsurprisingly, he's now our leader, and we can now hire him. And he's done it. Kerensky, the madman, has somehow managed to restore democracy to the party and indeed the country. We now have access to every Soviet advisor. With yet again, though, the exception of Smalga, Smirnov, and any of the left opposition leaders. For some reason, there's a glitch right now that they're still in prison despite us doing democracy to the party. I hope Paradox fixes that when By Blood Alone comes out, because they've known about it for a while. I talked about it when we did a line in the Zenoniites several months ago, so I'm quietly confident in a few weeks it'll be fixed. But if somehow you're watching this in the future and it hasn't, oh well. <laughs> I'm not Paradox, I'm afraid. I can't force them to do anything. But what I can do is create a democratic Soviet Union. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. This exploit does have its limitations. It isn't perfect, and I'm gonna go over some of its limitations now. This first one is the big one. If somehow the referendum is disabled, you just cannot flip. Take for this example here as Germany. We have over 60% democratic support, but there's no referendum here. We cannot flip. You'll find many other examples like France. For any of France's ones, when they flip ideology, the referendums are disabled. You can't flip back democratic, you can't flip communist, you can't flip fascist. I'd recommend, if you are going to use this exploit to do a dry run in non-Iron Man to experiment with it, just add popularity to up to 60% of your ideology and see if the referendum is enabled or not. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you might do a whole game like this and discover that, yet again, the referendum is disabled, which is unfortunate. That's the main limitation of this, but there is one other thing that this thing cannot do. We are now in Carlis, Spain. Now what should happen is that non-aligned support should be removed from the event, but what actually happens is it removes fascist support. I believe this is another glitch where it accidentally targets the wrong ideology. What this means is, this exploit does not work with non-aligned. In fact, non-aligned will be your biggest problem with this exploit, because there is no way to easily remove non-aligned. We can't do things like anti-democratic, anti-communist raids for them. The only thing we can do is press censorship, and that only removes 0.01 a day. So keep in mind whenever you're trying to do this, if you have far too much on line support, you might not be able to flip easily. It might still be possible, but with this it'll be a lot harder. The example I can think of is Greece. Greece starts with a lot of non aligned support, so if somehow you wanted to flip, I don't know, communist using another tree, that's just not going to happen easily with this. This and the referendums are just the main two downsides of this. Of course you do have the other things like such as loss of war support and high world tension, but world tension is only a number and war support, well, you can do things like war propaganda and stuff. Sure it does suck, I can't lie, but oh well, I'm sure there are ways you can get it back. But thanks to this exploit you can pull off some impossible things, such as a communist South Africa with King Edward VIII. A democratic Iberian Union with the communist tree and the one we've been doing a democratic new economic policy there we go I'm sure there are many more things you could use this exploit for I haven't used it for absolutely every single country but I think there could be so much potential with this so do let me know how you've used it and what you've managed to do with it I'm very very interested to see what people can do with this now I know I already used this exploit in the Communist Netherlands video a few weeks ago, but as I commented on the Poland video last week, I decided to make a video specifically dedicated to the exploit, because there's many little intricacies that I might have missed in that and I decided to have a definitive guide to it here. But again, I think it's time to end. I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any of your suggestions in the comments below for future video ideas, I'm always looking for them. However, until we meet again, this has been me, Bubble Zest, doing the ultimate ideology exploit, also known as the foreign policy flip. And until we meet again, good bye.